you might remember last episode after Damien got some rust off the drop saw, we got to cutting some metal out to do some storage in the interim. This episode, we'll get it done. Brewpeg was a sunken fishing trawler that was stripped out and ready for the scrapyard. She's just completed a 10 year rebuild that's brought her back to life. With the help of volunteers and funded by our Patreons, community and subscribers, she'll be crewed by passionate people from around the world. If you'd like to be involved and support the project, please consider joining us on Patreon or subscribe to the channel. There's a link in the description below. So 75 flat bar with a piece of 25 by 25 clamp to it so that we can get a nice edge. And you can see I've stepped it back about 3 mil so that we can sit the piece of 30 mil flat on top of that and basically weld to it. And we're going to do exactly the same, line it up better like that, but we'll clamp it all the way along so that we end up with a perfectly straight, flat, lovely piece of stainless to weld to. We've got five of these strips. So these have been cut, corners, radius. They're ready to go. So these, when they're vertical, will form the basis of our tracks. We had a moment, so Dame thought I might like to relearn TIG, and I jumped at the chance, particularly to use the new welder. So that, that mark there is lining up now with that mark there. That one's clamped, that one's clamped. Gone. So yeah, that's the up. Actually that's probably not bad because if we weld that it'll... Yeah, it'll cover it up, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Alright, so we should maybe just throw one. We can put it exactly in the middle now. That's not quite perfectly in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need to weld this up. Okie dokie. I'll just sit here and look at this pretty thing. Going to setting up the uni move. What the size of this thing? <laughs> it's like a meter away. It feels like a meter to you. It's like the. It's um, enormous. It's it's like really lightweight. Like it's built for you know confident, strong, independent women that need a welder in their handbag and they want something light and easy to carry. <laughs> That's why they've only made it's it. Like computer there. That's why they've made it less than fifty kgs. <laughs> I get this wrong every time I plug it in, like that polarity, I always get it around the wrong way and then I realise I need to swap it around and it's every single time it's like it's like a USB, you know how you got a you got a 30% chance of getting it in the right way because you always put it in the right way then think it's wrong, turn it around and then it's polarity on the weld is exactly the same, I do it every time. But you know accidents happen when you're sweating that much. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember, I need a fucking right. You do, you really do. Yeah. Okay, so write it down. You you know you know you need to uh, earth earth. Now we need the tabulator. Torch goes onto the negative. This is the controls for the like the it does the gas on. There's a dial on the torch and the trigger that comes through this, and then that's your gas line. The so gas line, this little quick connect fitting at the front there, and then you got the controls come in, and it can, oh it can only go one way. So you got this little that little white dot just there. Mm -hmm. So it's got little indents in this plug, so you can't, you can roll it round and it'll only go in one way, oh, so nice. the pins line up the right way. And yes, this is a plug for Uni Make. Yes, yes. They've been great to us. This welder was sponsored for Brewpeg, but before, previously, we've bought two other Uni Make welders. So this is not us plugging free stuff. This is us genuinely saying we love Uni Make stuff. We buy it even if we're not sponsored by these guys. Mm -hmm. It's just great value for money, they're awesome welders. But we never would have brought this unit because the budget for Brewpeg is a little bit outside this. But yeah. The budget for Brewpeg included welding with sparklers <laughs> and Unimig came along and said you should probably just get a proper welder. <laughs> yeah, try this one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you Unimig. Thank you Unimig. <laughs> <laughs> Smart set TIG, high frequency TIG, lift TIG, and then stick welding. So what we want is smart set TIG. So mild steel, stainless or aluminium. We go to stainless, butt joint, fillet joint. So then we've got the how big is the actual tungsten. So we've got 1.6, 2.4, or 3.2. So we've always got 2.4s on this boat. How thick is the material? So it's three millimeters. So we'll go down to three mil. What gas you're using? In this case, we're using 100% argon, which is the only option anyway. And that's done. Set up. Ready to go. Thanks, Thanks David. David. So when we tack, all we do is rest the cup on 
to work, whatever it is, and then you can rock it back and forth to get the height of the tungsten what you want, and then you can just press the trigger when you're ready. You can go nice and slow, press the trigger when you're ready, and you can watch the two pieces of metal fuse together, and you let go of the trigger, and then you just hold it there and wait for the gas to stop running. So you want that gas, it's called post flow, and you want to keep having that gas go over the weld. Like, see how that weld is it's basically beautiful and shiny and it's just stainless. If I pulled it away, it would go without the gas. Like, when I finish welding, if I pull away too early and oxygen touches the hot weld, it goes grey and horrible and it does what's called sugaring and it's it's a weak weld. It just looks terrible. But if you, if you keep that post flow on the work, you end up with beautiful stainless TIG welds. That's one of the tricks to getting the really beautiful TIG welds is to keep that post flow correct and off that's it oh, that's awesome, isn't it? yeah so that's it it's simple eh? wow it's such a thin layer yeah wow. so let's just work our way along It's good. It's so this has been flipped over, this is the piece that Jess just tacked together on the back here. I've got my 25mm box section that's going to eventually become the door. I've got the piece that I need to weld on this side, but I've put two extra pieces in here as a spacer, so I've got a 6mm spacer. And the reason I've done that is because we've got a couple of mil of mesh plus a pot rivet, so it's probably going to be another couple of mil of pot rivet. So by the time we get this box plus the mesh and a pot rivet, we might only have a mil or two of clearance coming along here. Okay, so it's got a slight bow in it. It's got a bow going that way, so uh, I might just try and stand on it outside, get it outside, put it vertical on a couple of blocks or something, and just try and literally stand on it. We had exactly the same problem when we made the sliders for the arms for the wings. They had a horrific bow, and we ended up hitting a, uh, a couple of 12 ton jacks and some chains, and that was what it took to straighten those out. Um, stainless is notorious for bending. I just didn't think this would bend as much as it has, but. Um, I'll do so you can see the spots that I've got for welding. Yeah. I'll do every second one. Right. So you just Yeah, you don't want to walk the uh stainless behind, do you? Yeah. Heat it up too much. Is it heating up very much? No, I'm not heating it. Maybe two again. One again. Uh another half, so can you put the stick one half together? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good hope. I can hold it in if you want me to hold it in. Can you lean on? Just see if you I can rest myself and yeah. use my legs. You can know? You just see if you can lean enough weight into it. Okay, and
Right, bottom track welded in, built, etc. So time to do the top track and then we can start figuring out these doors. The top tracks are made exactly the same way. So 25 box section clamped together so that we've got a nice square edge. We've got a little mark just down there, you might be able to see it, but that's center to center because this is slightly shorter than that. That's all good. So let's crack on, get these made so that we can then get this bolted to the roof. to get the stainless doors that we're going to build to go into these tracks the top and bottom two tracks i need to make one of them removable i'm going to make the top one removable obviously because we welded the bottom one on now to do that i've made four of these little stainless tags so i'm going to weld these vertical onto the back of the track that we've just built and they're going to bolt to the ribs that live up here right with it blocked up like that clamped up like so I know that it's parallel with the front face, so this face is parallel with this face, which is what I need. I have made these little tags, as you saw just before, and I've drilled one up here. It's a bit difficult to show, but sort of touch up there, bolt it in, you can sort of see it there. What I'm going to do now is weld it onto that end, and we know that end's fixed, and then we can get that end adjusted up and down, get it perfectly parallel, so that the tracks are even right the way along. And then I think we're good to go at that point. We can weld a tag at that end. Two tags welded on, can bolt that up to the top now, and that allows me to then do a proper adjustment height-wise to get this absolutely perfectly parallel right the way along between the two. Okay, this looks a bit precarious, but I've got these brackets that were made a wee while ago. I think I think Jess welded these up, or Burke? I can't actually remember who welded these up. These were made to hold the kayak that goes on the side of Brewpeak, so rather than sitting it on the wheelhouse roof. Anyway, right now they are providing perfect parallel alignment, so I can see if the top of this channel here, or the side of this channel here, lines up with the side of this one, we do the same at each end, because that way it's not gonna twist off as we close or open them, they're not gonna twist off, they'll stay bang on parallel. I did have to bend this up here. You might be able to see that there, if you ignore our really high-tech LED wiring. Um, this here had to get out of the way of this. Doesn't matter, the um, gates don't need that up there, you can see it stops short on this one over here as well. My custom mount, as you can see in operation, is, is doing its job nicely. So we've got 410 mil between the centre track and the centre track up here, and that's parallel the whole way down. It does dip in the middle ever so slightly because they both have a slight bow in them, um, but it only dips about four millimetres, so not enough that it's going to make any difference um, in the operation of this. Now, rather than sliding stainless directly in these channels, I am thinking about putting a little bit of uh, black plastic, I think it's nylon or um, ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene, I'm not sure what exactly it is, but I've got some nylon or some black plastic that I might be using in that. We'll see if that works out to be the case. But for now I need to weld the tag onto that rib. Righto, the tags are now welded on, time to drill the holes. Time for some doors. I've done the bolts up, it's nice and tight, but obviously there's a pretty specialized test when you're trying to hold this much, you know, gear and parts and things back. Um, not a lot of people know this, but there's one way to check. Yeah, that's not gonna go anywhere. Interestingly, that also applies to trailers. A long time ago, we had a viewer drop a bunch of these in. These are essentially clamps to hold hydraulic pipes. You can imagine if there's another one of these on the opposite side, you can stack a whole bunch of different size hydraulic pipes or pipes of whatever nature and you can clamp them and they don't do any damage to the pipes but it holds the pipes really rigidly. I've been trying to figure out what we can use this for for about five years and I've just figured out what we can use this for. I really want these doors to slide beautifully and this stuff 
is fantastic for sliding things on. So I'm gonna make some little tabs that the doors will sit on and that'll allow me to slide it in that track without having stainless on stainless and having it sort of score itself and gark up all the way. Slidey block. All right, time for doors. So we've got our basic measurements that we need to sort of stick within. This is the box that I have to build everything in. And these are the two overlapping doors. This is specifically how I'm building it. Now, I'm not going to do 45 cuts on the sides here. It's just too hard with our drop saw. It's a rubbish drop saw. What I am doing is a vertical down there so you can't see the ends of the pipes. Same deal on this end, except for this bottom corner because I want to put a snap lock into it and I need an open end. So one corner is open on this drawing. And then these little blocks here are going to be these wee fellas. So these are the sliding plastic thing so they'll one will mount you know there and one will mount there we're going to cut them in half obviously because we've got two doors but yeah so that's our cutting list let's get into it and start making these doors this is flexi ducky ducking <laughs> flexi ducking <laughs> this is for the battery box Duncan felt strongly and so do we that the battery box needs venting so it gets hot and and we've talked about it before on the channel it gets hot but we, what we're going to do is we're actually going to use this we're going to put a hole in the wall we're going to run this out the top of the roof and hopefully have a fan working on that and we, we have we'll have a we found an ac fan that's what? quite quiet so which is a big bonus on this boat and we have duct seal like we have uh, holes in the wall on the galley side so we can get some fresh air in and this will pull it out so that'll come up uh, where the other vents come up out of the roof for the downstairs ventilation Just checking uh, the welding from the day. We will say first. Beautiful, honey. Thanks. Oh, there's heaps of room at the back. So we might get a bit of rattling on that back one. It's quite quite a big gap, isn't it? I, if there's any loose areas, I'm thinking I'll fill it up with some sort of like nylon or something. Yeah, perfect. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Great work. Before we can weld anything together, we need to clean all the burrs off that happen when you cut something. Just using a file at a 45 to just get rid of everything that's going to cause our alignment to be up. We're about to tig something, but look at this. Have you ever seen Damien look this comfortable before? <laughs> I can recline back and lean my head yeah. on the roof. <laughs> on the lip? Yeah, that supports me really well. It's nice. <laughs> yeah. Resting on crates with a pillow look. Yes. We don't <laughs> slum it here in Brew Peak. <laughs> Never seen you look so yeah. comfortable. So um, Dan's lined it all up, ready for me to take. I was just having thought, oh, rather, no. than, rather than tack it on the bit that has the, the dip, which is a harder place to tack, tack on the bottom. So. Are you down here? Yeah. It looks like it's sitting up, but it's, it does, it's not, it's flush. But... Aiming for the middle? Yep. After just tack the frames in the position they needed to be, I just had to weld them out fully. Two frames welded together and stainless security mesh. So if we place that over there like that, pop rivet that on, that's going to be our security to stop stuff going through it. Now, there's a bit of a gap, it doesn't quite fit. We've got three pieces that we managed to find at the scrapyard, so one, two, and then three of the back. We're going to hopefully put that guy there in half so that we can cover this end up. It's not ideal, we would have loved to have had a single piece, but that's all we can work with at the minute. So, crack on. What I need to do is actually trim this down, so slicing along here, and I'm hoping I can do that with my shears. That's on the inside? Yeah, correct. Yeah. yeah. 
So, so it's not going to hurt anyone. The, the track encapsulates it all as well, so even the rivets, like you can't actually get your finger anywhere near the danger zone. Yeah, right. Yeah. Great, those wells look awesome. Thanks, love. Actually, that's a really good point. Jess just brought up our new um, sawhorse stands. Well, these are play school stands, actually, because they're made literally out of plastic and they weigh about as much as a small Lego character. <laughs> we got these stands because the other ones, the originals that we had were steel and they were, yeah, it's working. The other steel ones were just going to rust and die, so we decided some lightweight plastic ones were in order. All right, can I cut this straight? Well, let, let me do it. Awesome. Sharp though, but that's, yeah. that's all right. Okay, can you average that at that end? That's easy, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bloody awesome, awesome we tall. Uh, actually, I'll do, go back here because then if we do an overlap, we can do more. Oh, nice, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's pretty strong. Yeah. It's gonna. Once yeah. we zip it all down, yeah, that'll, that'll be, be fine. Great. Yeah. Good, good. Still just drilling. Yeah, I'll cut all the other stuff. Okay. It makes it really fast to join metal, those things, eh? Yeah, it's so good. Well, strong enough, I'd say, eh? Yeah, they're going to be lovely. So on the bottom corners, so this this edge here of these each of these doors made these little plastic sliders, I suppose you'd call them. But basically, they're just a a, a pad that this thing can slide easily on, and. If you have a look in there, see if I can get it to focus, but if you have a look in there, I've got it countersunk. So when I put a rivet in, I've got two rivets. When I put a rivet in, that head is flush, so it's gonna always slide on the plastic. This stuff doesn't glue, so you can't use like an adhesive or anything like that. You have to use some sort of mechanical fastening, screw, bolt, rivet, couple of rivets in each end. And there's four of these pads in total. We'll get those on and these doors should slide really nice. Nice. I've offset the one on this end quite a bit because there's a lock that has to go in here, a little, like a spring lock type thing that we need to put in. There you go, little sliders. So that should work quite nicely. Time to get these down into the engine room and into the tracks. First up, we need to unbolt the top track and bring that down and then give everything a blooming good clean up so that we can slide these doors in. Then the moment of truth to figure out if the doors actually fit. Answering the age old question, were the doors ever a duet? There he is. The only thing I can see is they can rattle, maybe. Maybe. But maybe not. Okay. Might have to do an end each. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I'm just going to jiggle this one. Okay. Whoa! Whoa. Easy as. Alright. Okay, I think I'm ready. Yeah, I'll just put these two in. I'll just put these two in and then I'll come up. Okay. Right. Should be able to slide them now. Yeah, I'll wait until we can see the moment. <laughs> what am I doing hard? Oh, oh. Look at that. Whoa! <laughs> Gorgeous! Wow. That was awesome. Hey, I was going to. 
I love that they're a bit hard to move, but yeah. it's nice. Do you want something? Like <laughs> there we go. Look, look. Oh, look, I've got to put something away. Oh, oh what a shame. They work in both these open and closed. Actually, put that one there and that one there. You can do whatever you want. I oh, know, it's better the other way, isn't it? It's quite cool either way, actually. Yeah. But you can put them in the middle, look. <laughs> they work awesome. They are amazing. With the top shelf sorted, it's now time to deal with this middle shelf. They look amazing. Are you going to be able to sleep at night? You can take your organisation. I bet you know it. It's tailing, baby. And my crooked little heart that seems so rebellious is falling apart right I think this is what uh, engine room storage uh, shelving should look like. <laughs> it's really good. It's amazing. What a huge job from the first first getting the shelves to actually getting this done. Jess found these at the scrappy. They were there. We go Bosch hot water assistant. So this used to be on the back of a Ute, and it had a whole bunch of stuff up the top that we cut off and ripped out, and yeah. we put new locks in. And yep. yeah, it's kind of the vision, eh? It's, this yeah. is how you envisioned it, honey. I think the only thing that I had different in my head was these were stainless. But ah, yeah. Alloy's fine. Alloy works. <laughs> it's yeah. not flammable, so that's good. That's true. Yep. Isn't, doesn't that look just incredible? Yeah, so we need to do a little doodacky of some sort to hold these in. Yeah. But yeah, we're just pondering a couple of ideas. We think we've sorted it, but yeah. we'll do that later. It'll be something simple because we don't need something massive to hold these in. They're relatively light. And they're kind of they're locked in sideways. They can only actually come out this way. But mm. And yeah. they will be kind of heavy, so yeah. yeah. Well, You're happy with it? Yeah, I think it came out really cool. The only thing I'm a bit frustrated by was um, when I welded it, I got a bit more of a bow yeah. in, in the tracks, and I thought, like you can see here, it's quite far down, and it's it's sort of snug up in the middle. It doesn't matter, it doesn't affect it in any Yeah, way. but they run perfectly, yeah, yeah. like amazing. Just yeah, that exactly. little bit at the end, it just needs to, the, one of those bars just needs yeah. to... Um, little flats tweaked. needs to be tweaked, tweaked yeah. but oh, it's amazing! Yeah. You did a great job. So have a good close look at this man. There are many jobs that are exhausting and satisfying, but he's been absolutely over the moon with this. <laughs> but look how tired he is! <laughs> it's like two months of heat wave yeah. and the humidity's sitting around a hundred at seven in the morning. I, I don't even hot. remember what it's like working when it's less than thirty degrees every yeah. day now. Like yeah. I just can't remember anymore. But it's really lovely seeing you so happy and, and like it's actually starting to yeah. this is this is the bit that's really enjoyable. Yeah. Like all the hard slog and now we're gonna start enjoying these moments of things looking cool, working. Yeah. And it's funny because we've spent years with people in the comments saying, Why don't you tidy it up? Why don't you make it look nice? And this was in our head the whole time. Yeah. And it's like yeah, 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 we'll yeah. get to that. As soon as we've put the motor in and, you know, filled all the holes up in the boat and stuck it in the water, and, you know, we will get to it. And after, you know, eight years, rested yeah. for a month yeah. and just done light jobs so we can actually recover and, and Dane can, back can stop hurting for a bit. Yeah, but this is this is one of those jobs. This is incredibly satisfying. I'm pretty happy with how it turned yeah. out. I mean, it does look a little industrial, but, you know, that's how we rock, we rock and roll on the So do I. Rock and roll. Yeah. on this boat <laughs> okay that's pretty good on that dad joke should we sign off <laughs> i did a dad joke, you did a dad joke. <laughs> oh my god it's contagious congratulations this is really gorgeous okay we can't leave it there these are spiffing don't get me wrong but have a look at all the stuff that's off camera we need to find a home for that now i'm no seismologist but i'm pretty confident we can get all of it in that red box so this toolbox build can't take forever. We've got places to be and see to see. So let's get this thing done.
So in order to mount said box, I've made a frame out of stainless. So, let's get this welded. Just swell and dandy. Let's get this vertical. Now that we know the stainless frame fits on the bottom, it's time to figure out how high we're going to mount the set of drawers next to the bench. So, option one, something like that, wherever the top of that is, and option two, Pretty much there. Yeah, somewhere about there. Plus an inch. Yeah. yeah. So it, like it's already back, whatever you know, six inches or something from the desk. Um, so the drawers are not necessarily going to get in the, too much of the way. Um, yeah. Put it up. No, no, no. Right. Height, height adds more stuff to do, but at the same time, it kind of looks like it sort of looks right, if that makes sense, with the top of that. So that's that's something that you're keen on, obviously. Well, I, I do like it. You lose the use of the top of this thing, like you use, like if your shelf is at that height, you can't really use it. So if it's there, your shelf is more usable. It would get, if it's up high, you get underneath. But yeah. I would hazard a guess that if you've got it here. Yeah, a and, shelf at that height is more usable. Like, what than, I'm thinking like. You know, your helmets like build a little yeah, fiddle and yeah, fiddle yeah. It just lives there, sort of thing. Well, yeah. I don't know, that's a pretty usable space in it. Ver versus there. having that space at the bottom, mm. but it's kind of, I mean, it's, it's, can't use it's it. more long term storage, it's stuff you wouldn't. Yeah. This is like cost benefit, I, I'd say go with the lower down. Can you live with not having that on that point there? Yeah. You sure? No, but I will. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll build it. I don't bottom. think it's going to be okay. <laughs> Sweet, I'll build it on the bottom then. Done. Right, I've done the old measure do on this thing here. It's 945 millimeters, or no idea, in Imperial. So when we mount this thing here, basically it sits about there, but up uh, about 30 millimeters. So I have four points that I'd like to anchor this bottom on. So what I'm thinking, small leg at the back, sort of bigger leg at the front, and then I'll angle a couple of legs over onto this rib here. And then I'm also going to tie it into this piece of the bench here. I'm going to pot rivet the this is basically thin tin, I don't know what size, one millimeter or something, but I'm going to put a row of pot rivets along there into the stainless. This is 1.6 mil stainless. I can't get to the back of this, I can't bolt it, so that's why I'm just happy to pot rivet it. If we need to take it out, we can re-drill those out, it's not a big deal. Just lose the drawers like that and you've got plenty of working room. After much mucking around, I've now got this level sitting on my exhaust clamp, a file, some old grinding discs, and then a lot of leveling up and measuring, but I think we have it in position so that it's going to work. So I just need to measure up some legs now. Okay, I've got angle bracket here, angle bracket here. These are both just tacked in. I've got a template here for one that's going to sit down the back like that. So that'll give us three points of contact on the base. And then we'll have our rivets running along here. I'll probably do like four or five rivets at least along here. So we'll tack this last one in. We'll get the red box sitting on here. We'll make sure it fits. It doesn't do any weird angles or anything like that. If everything works, we'll weld this out properly. And then we'll start pot riveting the red box in. All right, time to manhandle this into here. So it's these are tacked on. I've got one at the back, one here. And I took the one off that was here. It wasn't right. So I've got those tacked on. They're just sitting there. That frame is sort of loose to be positioned. Stick that on top. And then I'm going to be able to line it up with this and get it absolutely bang on, make sure these legs are right, and then we can tack it in place. Practically no swearing occurred off camera, and this is now perfectly aligned, so that worked out really well. Um, these little gold uh, bronze washer things that I've got, they're actually for our get home motor. Daniel supplied those when he um, built the shaft that, it's a long story, but it's part of the get home motor contraption we're using those as spaces that's allowing me to put that tag there that leg up slightly it's not the right height now and at the back i've modified the leg but 
that gap's pretty even all the way down there. So I'll put a bit of maybe sealant or something up there just to stop tools and junk falling down that gap. But that's coming up really nice. It's sitting perfectly level and it's nice and true. So let's get this welded out properly. Outside it's absolutely pissing down. So it's about 400% humidity in this room. We have a set of drawers and a blimmin' neat little slot that we can put our ammo box in. So I'll make a bracket or something like that just to hold that guy. But that fits perfectly down beside the compressor in this box. So next job is figuring out what are we putting where. So I'd love to have some um, ideas. Like if you guys throw them in the comments if you've got ideas as to what tools you'd put in this side and what tools you'd put over here in the bigger, bigger, longer drawers. So We've got these guys here. They're not they're not real deep. They're only maybe a bit over two inches deep. Um, so what's that? 50 mil, 60 mil, something like that. Um, but they're quite wide. So open these drawers up so you can sort of see they're reasonably deep, quite wide. Actually, give me engineering hammer. They're, they're that long to give you context of stuff. So we've got 16 drawers to use. We've got eight of these bigger ones, the wider, deeper ones, and we've got uh, eight of these guys. So we've got two different sizes we've got these sort of medium size ones here they're not super high and then we've got two of these these guys are call that 380 mil comfortably by uh 250 mil and they're what's that 1200 mil uh 120 mil deep sorry and then these ones are half size so i'd love to know what you guys would do in terms of organizing this we've got a little shelf up here obviously we can't put too much up here that's got to be capable of going to sea so we can't have stuff crashing around so that's probably going to have nothing on it until we just need to sit stuff there we've got the one at the back we're going to put a big fiddle on that was scott's idea to put a fiddle on that to have stuff there and the fiddle will be removable these are all lockable so this lock here locks the whole lot so you don't have to worry about them opening up at sea lastly we have one box underneath here that big aluminium box pull the seat out big aluminium box that's going to be mounted right at the very back there as well and that's going to be more like long-term storage like parts and stuff that we don't need to access so we are going to be putting as much storage as possible into this room so bear that in mind that bit there is going to have things like that box down there that's come from daniel that's some hydraulic parts so things like that will be potentially stacked in that aluminium box man that was a mission it's so incredibly humid in here today but yeah, love to have your thoughts. I'd really like to get some feedback so we can start organizing this room to get it finally tidied after 10 years of building.